looks like two layers of a cake. Well, what is it really? Marshmallows. And look at that texture. Yeah, it's squishy. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm here with a special guest, Mel. Hi everybody, I'm Chef Mel. And today we are making... We are making marshmallows, homemade marshmallows. Homemade marshmallows and here guys the sky is the limit in terms of flavors colors Swirls sprinkles anything you want to use everything goes So you can be really creative with this recipe. Yes, it's a lot of fun and we are gonna make cotton candy flavored swirled marshmallows you can, once these set, you guys can eat them as a snack, obviously, because they're delicious right away. Or you can bake them with s'mores. You can incorporate them in other desserts. You can freeze them. They are delicious, and you'll never want a store-bought marshmallow again. So quick rundown on the marshmallows before we get started. Basically, in here, we're going to be making a meringue, which are egg whites and sugar. And the key ingredient to making a marshmallow, which is that fluffy texture that we love, mm -hmm is gelatin. So we are incorporating gelatin into our meringue, which is going to make it nice and fluffy. Okay, that, so can you explain to me a little bit more of what these are? Yes. So these are actually gelatin sheets. Um, each one of these weighs about two grams. If you want to see them, you can kind of hold them. They're like really fun. You can bend them. They're not even going to break. See, you hold them. Whoa. And so what we want to do is what's called blooming. And we want to bloom these gelatin sheets in ice cold water. Okay. If you do it in warm water, these will actually just melt and disappear. Okay. So it's really important that it's ice water. And you'll see the texture totally changes after they bloom. Okay. So we kind of just want to place them into the water just like this. Mm -hmm. Whoa, they're sticking to each other. Oh yeah, they will do that. Once, they're, once they get a little bit more wet into the water, and so what's important is we want it to be completely submerged in the water, so if we need to add a little bit of water to the top, we can always do that. Can I let you do. put these in there? Okay, yes. Yes. So what could you use other than gelatin sheets? So that's a really good question because gelatin sheets, you have to kind of know what they are and you have to know how to look for them. So. Generally, you could make homemade marshmallows with powder gelatin that you can find in any grocery store. Okay. Amazon, of course, online. Um, but you can pretty much find them anywhere. You can get like powder gelatin that you would use to make jello. Okay. It's the same thing. Perfect. So while you finish that, I will show the other secret ingredient. So here, I've actually measured out what's called glucose. And glucose is just an inverted form of sugar. So it's the exact same thing as the sugar that's in this bowl, except it's inverted and it's into a liquid form. Okay, is it important that it's in a bag like that? So the reason I put it in a bag like that is because generally if I put it into a bowl, like have you ever poured honey into a bowl or maple syrup? You feel like you can't always get it all out. Mm -hmm. Like some of it always sticks to the bowl. So in this case, I wanted to make sure we got every little drop. And so I pre-measured it in just like little saran wrap and we're gonna cut a tiny little hole here just to pour it out. So it's kind of like an icing bag. Yeah, exactly. And this is super important because it's gonna keep our sugar from crystallizing and it's going to add more of that uh, marshmallowy texture. Okay. Okay. So we've got our gelatin blooming. So this is gonna take about 10, 10 minutes or so. So we're gonna let that do we its thing. We might need to add a little bit more water. We to might have top. to add a little bit more water or ice. We'll see, because it'll Blue actually water. soak up a lot of that. And you can kind of see, look how it's already changing. You Whoa. see that? Whoa. Cool, huh? It, oh, I don't know how to describe <laughs> the texture. <laughs> it feels, it kind of it kind of reminds me of fish. A fish or fly? Like fish scales. Fish scales. That's yeah, it kind of does. I don't know. I might so have this. Not this, duck tails. No, know. it's a very interesting that you say that because most gelatin is actually made from animals, oh. and so it's either made from pork. A lot of the time, most of the gelatin is made from pork, um, and now you can find gelatin that's made from seaweed, which is called agar agar. It's a lot harder to use, but it's same thing. It's kind of got that like fish reminding kind of texture. So that's a vegetarian option for anyone who like. That sounds pretty vegetarian. interesting. Seaweed gelatin. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Okay, so the next step, uh, let's go ahead and pour this sugar in here. And this sugar is already pre-measured. 
Yes, so I should preface by saying everything is measured to the gram. It's really important so that we can make sure to get perfect results. Perfect. Yeah, looks good. And then what we're going to do is cut. You want to do it? I'll, I'll hold it. Okay, I'll hold it. so let's hold it a little bit lower. These are, aha, okay, here we go. So we're just going to pierce a little hole here, and you'll see it'll kind of just all start coming out. What does this do to the sugar? So this, so if you cook sugar by itself, you have the chance of what's called crystallizing, and it'll kind of form all these big clumps. We want a really nice, beautiful sugar syrup, and we don't want clumps. So this is basically going to keep that from clumping. Okay. Anti-clumping. Anti-clumping. No so, clumps. So if no you just clumps added water to this, it would clump. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We are going to add a little bit of water, but we wanted to make sure to get And that's why we need Chef Mel to teach us, because... These little tricks make all the difference. Yeah. <laughs> we would have dumped a bunch of water in there and probably went away and watched TV and then burned. Oh no! Well, if you leave this with just water and sugar, that's how you make caramel. So you can do that too. Really? Mm -hmm. Like, do you add any flavor? I'm going to okay. steal a little bit of this water, which is totally okay. fine. Just... We'll add that. So the texture here, and what we really want is what's important Sorry about the hand. What's important is, if you can see, the sugar here is wet and mm -hmm. this sugar is dry. Do you see how this one looks white is and this it, one looks wet? Is it like wet? a protective layer? So it's kind of like protecting it on the top. So what we want to do is kind of just stick one finger in there. Yep, go for it. Whoa. And kind of just mix it around. It feels like kinetic sand. Exactly! That's the texture that we want. Um, and you want all of the sugar to be like that and have no dry spots because if you have any dry spots, that sugar is going to burn. Okay. Okay? I think we're good. We right? want no burn sugar. No burn sugar. Perfect. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to wipe this off right here. Okay, so this is also really important. So you notice how we kept the pan really clean. Yeah. Okay? So now we get to kind of just set this over there, cook it, and kind of almost forget about it for a few minutes. And we're going to use our super cool infrared thermometer. And we're going to cook this to 118 degrees Celsius, which I feel like I should know what that is in Fahrenheit. About 250. Thank you. So 250 Fahrenheit, okay? Roughly. Roughly. And that's what we want to cook this syrup to. So we're going to let that do its thing, and we are going to go back and uh, actually look at our egg whites. So in here we have egg whites, uh, which uh, we cracked earlier in the day. Um, you can also do it the day before, and it's important. Now this is super key. If there is even a tiny, tiny amount of egg yolk, that's the yellow part. That's the yellow part. Even I know that part. Yes. <laughs> the yellow part. You could mix this all day and you will never get a meringue. Ooh, okay? Wow. So, very important, no grease anywhere. If there's any sort of grease, it will never foam up, it'll never rise. Okay? So, fingers crossed <laughs> that we did this now, right. Now, now, Chef Mel, I have to, I want to brag on you for a second because it's, if I remember right, you won a competition because the person messed up their meringue. Oh my god, that's so true. <laughs> that's really funny. Um, yes, so on Chopped, what I would never recommend doing is making a meringue because American culture is very much against meringue because they say it's raw. Um, and when we make chocolate mousse, we eat raw egg whites, right? Uh, when we're making a meringue, we're still cooking it to a certain temperature. That's why we're adding in that sugar so that it is safe. Um, but yeah, meringues can be tricky. So you definitely want to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to add that one part. Because if you watch, we didn't mention it, but Mel is a two-time chopped winner, right? Two times, yeah. Not once, but how many times is it? Two! Two. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so um, if you want to have this go a little faster, feel free to add in a little squeeze of lemon, a little pinch of salt, um, or a little cream of tartar. Anything like that will actually dehydrate the water that's in here and make it go even faster. So we are kind of just going to put this on like a medium speed initially. Kind of like that. So the key is to kind of time the way your egg 
eggs are looking with your sugar. So if you see that your eggs are whipping up too fast and your sugar hasn't even moved at all, you want to lower one or speed up the other so that they kind of work together. Okay? Okay. So um, right now, is it a little too early to tell? Yes. So right now, it's a little too early to tell. Once you don't see that egg white kind of clear anymore and it's all white and foamy, okay. um, that's usually when we speed it up and our sugar should be almost dead. Okay. Okay? Um, if we want to check out our gelatin in the meantime, we can see kind of what that looks like. Whoa. You want to see? I'll take out one. So these are the gelatin sheets that we have been blooming for about five to ten minutes. How cool is that? And these are cool. <laughs> it kind of looks like um, plastic wrap. Yeah, it does. So are we're actually going to melt these down and put these into our meringue. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so like I said, this is pretty much key because if we don't have this, we could place this and it'll never set. Yeah. <laughs> it'll just stay a meringue. So now what we could do in the meantime, do you want to kind of pick your colors or see um, what color you want to use for your marshmallow? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. So, so I was thinking we could do white and then another color. Okay, so we've got pink. Uh, this looks like a little lighter pink. We also have purple. And we you have shot. cotton candy flavoring. Mm -hmm. So can we only pick one of these? Um, I mean, technically you could pick as many as you want. You just have to divide the batter into that many colors. Okay. So it's up to you. Um, I kind of want to do a swirl with pink and white. And then add the cotton candy. And then add the cotton candy. All right, cool. Okay, I think we should check on our progress. Yeah, let's spend a few minutes. Let's see where we're at. Okay, let's check over here first. So our sugar is now boiling, which is really good. This is, um, you know, a few minutes in. So right now it's like boiling a lot. Soon it's going to start to kind of simmer down and a lot slower boil. And it's going to go see-through. So we'll be back to see how that goes. And here, let's see. Look at that. We have beautiful egg whites that are already uh, whipping up really nicely. So here, if you wanted to make the whole batch pink, this is where you could actually add your pink, right now directly in here. Since we're going to do a swirl, we're going to divide it in half. Okay. All right, so now we're going to powder our surface. Okay, so this is a mixture of cornstarch and powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. It's basically like a little magic powder. It's going to keep the marshmallows from all sticking to each other. So here, I'll hold this for you, and you can kind of use your hand to kind of tap it around and move it around. There you go. Yeah, and feel free to like cover the whole surface. The okay. more the better. Awesome. So if we were to just put like powdered sugar, it would actually get absorbed into the marshmallow. So that's why we actually put cornstarch in here because we want it to kind of stay on the surface of all the marshmallows to keep them from sticking together. Should we check on our sugar? Let's yeah, it's a great idea. All right, let's infrared this. Ooh, it looks clear. Perfect. So we're actually at the right temperature. So we're going to remove it from the heat right away. We're going to let it just slow down the boil just a little bit. It's really nice and clear, which is great. There's no chunks in there. There's no pieces of sugar. So that's perfect. So for this next part, this is very delicate. And this is where you may want adult supervision because this is very hot. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to pour this directly into our whipping egg whites. Okay. okay? So what I do is I'll actually pour it down the side of the bowl. And I'm going to increase the speed here. Is the sugar substance? And look how much bigger it's getting. It's like doubling. Whoa. This is going to make it easier to split in half. Yeah, and you can also like, kind of lift it. This is a cool trick once you've done this a few times. It actually cools the sugar down if you get it a little bit too hot. So by the time it hits the bowl, it cools down a little bit. Ah, that's a good trick. It's a good trick. Perfect. And look how shiny those eggs just got. So now make sure you don't touch this side of the bowl. It's super hot. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to speed this up now. And you see all that kind of steam that's happening? We're yeah. gonna wait. That's gonna disappear. And while that happens,
happens, we're actually going to grab the same pot that we just used and we are going to grab our gelatin. And what you want to do, and this is super important, okay? What you want to do is squeeze it really nice and tight like this and then just drop it in. Drop it in here? Yep. Go ahead, Dale. Okay. Yeah. So have fun with that. I'm gonna squeeze all the water out because we really don't want any of that water. You would think you'd have to be careful with this type of stuff, but it's actually really durable, right? Yeah, that's because we we uh, put it in ice water. Because if not, I've actually done this before in warm water when I didn't know, and it totally disappears. Like you can't even find them. Well, they dissolve. Huh? They dissolve in the water completely. Because even right now they're kind of see-through in the water, but yeah. they didn't dissolve, so. Perfect. I think we got them all, right? Yep, that's all of them. Woo-ha! All right. This is so, the So it should actually kind of almost melt by itself because this was still really hot. If we need to, we can place it back on like a really low heat just for a minute. I can already see it kind of melting. You can kind of see it melting. You can use your spatula too if you want to kind of help it along. Hmm. So like once you know it's all melted, there should be no chunks or anything? Yeah, exactly. All right, and this is where we add our extracts. So we are using cotton candy flavor. Cotton candy. Okay, it smells really good. Ooh, yeah. Smell good? Okay, so for this, we want to be super, super careful not to use too much, okay? Like any extract, if we use too much, it's just going to taste like medicine. If you oh. use too little, you won't taste it, okay? So we're just, it's always better, I feel like, to add less than more. Yeah, medicine <laughs> flavored marshmallows when you're good. No. Can you imagine like cough drop flavored marshmallows? or? My sister doesn't really like cough drops, do you? Oh. Especially the cherry ones. Yeah. Those are the worst. Yeah, I don't like them. I don't like them either. All right, so do you want to pour this in? Kind of the way I poured in okay. the sugar. You can just hold it. I'm not going to be as fancy side. as you. Side. I did it. I poured it in. Okay, Should I, is that good? Yeah, okay. perfect. Okay. That's good to me. Here's the pink one. So what we do for these, and I love to, so these actually have a dropper, so if you are careful, you can add in a tiny drop. If you're always afraid to add in too much, you can use these little sticks okay. to kind of help you grab just a little and then put it in the marshmallow, and then we'll spread it around with so do you want this pink, the pink one to be fully pink or just a little bit pink? Yes, it should be fully pink. Okay. So we'll have white and pink and then we'll swirl them together. Wow. So you can make cotton candy. Uh, what other kind of flavors could you put in? Okay, so my very popular flavor that like my sister and my whole family love is the birthday cake. Ooh. Um, so I'll actually make like a vanilla layer cake and then crumble it into the marshmallow and add sprinkles. That sounds really good. So that makes like birthday cake marshmallows. Those are really, really good. Whoa, it's done thickening. Look at that, doesn't that look so good? Yeah, now we just need to So I don't like to waste any of it, so this is a good trick. Just take kind of two fingers, run your fingers across. Yeah. And that way we'll It feels grab super all of cool. That. Right? So now we need to divide up the marshmallow mixture. Okay, so we're gonna put half of it into this bowl and I'm gonna mix it up with some Pink flavoring. The flavoring or color? Color. Oh, why did I say flavoring? It's color. <laughs> gotcha, assistant. <gasps> Whoa! It looks like it's folding. Because it is. Whoa. It's okay. like case So batter. this part we're going to leave nice and white. Okay. And the part you're going to make is going to be pink, and then we'll swirl both of them together. Okay. Okay? So, a little pink goes a long way, 
So I would add like a tiny little dab, or yeah, you could use a tooth. Yeah, that's good. Start with that. Okay. Now, it doesn't look like a lot, but you'll see it's a lot. Put it like that. Whoa, okay. Oh my gosh, I wonder how pink the whole bottle is if you put it on oh, something yeah, like Oh yeah, very, this. very pink. Whoa, this like, it reminds me of like, it, yeah. it does remind me I'll of I'll give you batter. a tiny bit more. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to push it down? Yeah, you can grab like, try, yeah, there you go. Okay, now it's getting really pink. Yeah, because we want to see it really pink. Yeah, we want And it, it's hard to get it that really nice pink when you're starting with white. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a little trick Kay. just for you. So, what's great is you want to okay. kind of slide this along the whole bowl to regroup it. Because you see you have some hidden yeah, color uh -huh. in there and sometimes you don't see it. And you want to kind of lift up and kind of swirl it. Like it's like this. you're kneading it. Yeah, exactly. See? And then that way you can actually add in all that fun color. Do we want it a little more pink? I think that's good because, I mean, it doesn't, I don't really, oh, okay, we'll put a little bit more on it. A little more? All yeah. Right. Let's do it. I'm going to use a toothpick again. So which colors, which primary colors make purple? I'm not good with colors. Um, is it, is it blue and red? Yes. <laughs> good job. <laughs> not good with colors. Yeah, you are. Right, let's see how that does. You know the difference between blue and red? Don't be Yeah. Scared. There's also a color called green, right? And yellow. See, you know lots of colors. Roy G. Biv. Here. Don't ask me what all those colors are. All right, are we happy with this color? Yeah, yeah. I am. All right. So, what's really important is I'm going to keep one spatula for the white and one spatula for the pink, okay? okay. So, are we going to swirl it when it gets in there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so first we're going to kind of just... Pour them out, so I'll let you pour yours, and I'll pour this one directly in here. Okay, so can they get poured right on top of each other, or do you oh, have yeah, to Oh yeah, totally. Separated? Yeah. Let's just have fun. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Just want to make sure to get every last little bit in there. Go ahead. Okay. I'm not the best with pouring stuff. <laughs> you do a great job, assistant. Whoa! Isn't that so pretty? Yeah, it matches perfectly with the white. It matches your shirt, too. You mean my apron? Oh, wait, never mind, my shirt. Look, it's almost the exact same color as your shirt. That was what I was going for. <laughs> exactly. We're making it assistant shirt pink. Trademark. What? Pending. Oh. Here, why don't Here, I Here, you can get here. the extra. Okay. I got the majority out. Yeah. We'll grab this in here. So you excited excited for it, assistant? Yeah, I'm really excited. And if you guys don't have this fancy little frame that we're using, you don't have to have that. I would recommend a silicone mat like we're using right now because that's going to keep the marshmallow from sticking. Mm -hmm. Oops. That's fun. <laughs> so if you don't have one of those, it's probably going to be really hard. Too. Um, yeah, but you can do it in like a cake mold or oh, right. like any real mold that you have at home you could totally use. So now it's time for the mixing. See, we didn't actually make like a ton of it, so I may not even push it all the way out to the whole thing. I may just kind of keep mm -hmm. it on one side. And you can use the toothpicks and swirl. swirl. Oh. Yeah. Cool, huh? This is so cool. And you don't even have to be a pro chef to make this. Right? So the only thing you want to do is really keep an eye on that sugar. Uh, yeah. Because if we overcook that sugar, it's not going to work. It almost looks like a web. <laughs> yeah, it does. Mm, perfect. I'm going to get some more over there. Yeah, I can give you some white from here. <laughs> that looks pretty good. 
I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks really good. So I think we're good. So now the only thing left to do with this is let it do its magic, which is set. And we just have to leave it alone. So, oh wait, no, I lied. I lied. There is one more step. Do you remember before when you kind of dusted this mm -hmm. on the bottom? We're going to dust it over the top too. Okay, over the top. Mm -hmm. And you can almost coat it like entirely. Just don't feel like you can put too much. Yeah. That seemed good? Perfect. Okay. Good Looks good to me. So now we'll get back to this in like three or four hours when it's set and we can cut them. We're back! We're back. And so what do you have, assistant? We have the marshmallows. So we're actually going to now remove our mold so that we can cut our marshmallows into beautiful cubes and maybe a heart too. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, look yeah. at the side of it, assistant. Can you hold that up a little so we can see those sides? Yeah. The different colors? Whoa. It looks like two layers of a cake. Well, what is it really? Like marshmallows. And look at that texture. Yeah, it's squishy. When you look at it, it looks like it's going to be like firm, but it's really squishy. That's the difference between homemade marshmallows and store-bought marshmallows, mm -hmm. I want to say, because there's no preservatives in this one. So can you lift it up a little bit? Okay. Yeah. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> it's like a pizza dough. Okay. Super so cool. here is the trick to be able to cut them. We're going to dust this with our little secret mixture over here. Okay. And that's going to keep the knife from sticking and we wanted to kind of do that. So the way I like to do this is I'll cut into a strip and then... So it's kind of like how you cut brownies. Yes, exactly. Because that way they'll look really pretty and you can kind of make them even. And so what I do is I'll cut one and we'll use one to cut the other ones so that they're all around the same size. Ah, that's a good tactic. See? That's a good trick, right? Yeah. Like that. And kind of just keep placing it there. Move it over. We could do two more right here. There we go. Perfect. Look at those. Look at those marshmallows. So, so hold a couple up for us. Now they're squishy. They're more <laughs> squishy. They're like real squishies. But right? edible. So, so what I do is now we'll kind of dust them a little bit like this. Not a lot, just a little. Susan, can you hold those up and show me? What are those? Marshmallows. And you made them yourself, right? You and Mel made these homemade marshmallows. Look at them. Whoa. These look so cool. All right, now let's make a heart one. Yes, here, I'm gonna give you a whole piece. And if you actually probably place your hearts first, kind of see, I think you could get two of them out of there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so. It's like cutting um, Christmas cookies. Exactly. Okay, I got one. Cool. How cute. Heart marshmallow. Whoa, look at that. They're so pretty. Whoa, look at that marshmallow. It's super squishy. Now let's make one more heart. They're really pretty. They've got a nice dense texture to them. We've got both colors in there. But Not too many holes. The holes in there come from the air. Yeah. See when there's little holes in air there? Pockets. That's what you get from homemade marshmallows. Oh, okay. But I mean... See, there's a few in there. Yeah. That's okay. That's totally okay. Doesn't change the taste or anything. And these you can keep for a while, you know. You can put them in an airtight container. You can keep you them could, for you like... You could freeze dry them and they could be crunchy. You could freeze dry them. <laughs> oh, you got some on your nose! <laughs> so has this been a fun project, Assistant? Making these homemade marshmallows? Yes, it has. <laughs> oh, there's a pretty swirl. Ooh, look at that one. 
Ooh, that's super cool. Yep, we got a swirl. <laughs> so this, has this been fun making these homemade marshmallows? Yes, it has. You got them all over your face though. Look at that, you got marshmallows on your face. All right, so we're done making these marshmallows and they turned out really well. Did you think they were good to eat? Were they, were they yummy? Yeah. People at home, what was your favorite step about making these marshmallows? And do you think it's something that you would like to do with your family? I think it is. It's really fun. So remember to subscribe to the Engineering Family and make sure you check out Mel's channel on YouTube as well, right? And there will be a link in the description so you can find her and see all of her super awesome recipes. Don't these make for the cutest little gifts too? Yeah, they do. So cute. Because if you're having a party, you could give those out as gift bags. That'd be awesome. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.